Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be covering 1 Samuel 27 through 29 and Luke 13, 1 through 22. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. David among the Philistines. 1 Samuel 27 But David thought to himself, one of these days I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel, and I will slip out of his hand. So David and the six hundred men with him left and went over to Archishus son of Moach, king of Gath. David and his men settled in Gath with Artichus. Each man had his family with him, and David had his two wives, Ahamniel of Jezreel and Abigail of Carmel, the widow of Nabal. When Saul was told that David had fled to Gath, he no longer searched for him. Then David said to Achish, If I have found favor in your eyes, let a place be assigned to me in one of the country towns, that I may live there. Why should your servant live in the royal city with you? So, on that day, Atrixes gave him Zilgal, and it has belonged to the kings of Judea ever since. David lived in Philistine territory a year and four months. Now, David and his men went up to and raided the Gershwites, the Gerzerites and the Amalekites. From an ancient times, these people had lived in the land extending to Shor and Egypt. Whenever David attacked an area, he did not leave a man or a woman alive, but took the sheep and the cattle, donkeys and camels, and clothes. Then he returned to Ashish. When Ashes asked, Where did you go raiding today? And David would say, Against the Negev of Judea, or against the Negev of Jeremel, or against the Negev of the Canaanites. He did not leave a man or woman alive to be brought to Gath, for he thought, they might inform on us and say, This is what David did. And such was his practice as long as he lived in Philistine territory. Atchison trusted David and said to himself, He has become so obnoxious to his people, the Israelites, that he will be my servant for life. 1 Samuel 28. In those days the Philistines gathered their forces to fight against Israel. Acheson said to David, You must accompany me and in the army. David said, Then you will see for yourself what your servant can do. Achishus replied, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Saul and the medium at Endor. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Ramah. 
Saul had expelled the mediums and spiritists from the land. The Philistines assembled and came and set up camp at Shehunim. While Saul gathered all Israel and set up camp at Gilbal, that when Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. Saul then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There is one in Endor, they said. So Saul distinguished him. So Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes, and at night he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one I name. But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done? He has cut off the mediums and spirits from the land. Why have you set a trap for me, for my life, to bring about my death? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. And the king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? he asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then... Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He no longer answers my answers me, or either by prophets or by dreams. So I have called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, Why do you consult me now that the Lord has departed from you and became your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David, because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amaleks. And the Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also give the army of the Israelites into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words. He, his strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all de that day and all that night. When the woman came to Saul and said, that he was greatly shaken, and she asked, Look, your servant has obeyed you. I think my life, I took my life in my hands and did what you told me to do. Now please listen to your servant and let me give you some food so you may eat and have the strength to go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his men joined the woman in urging him, and he listened to them. 
He got up from the ground and sat on the couch. The woman had a fatted calf at the house, which she butchered at once. She took some flour, kneaded it, and baked bread without yeast. Then she set it before Saul and his men, and they ate. That same night they got up and left. Atchison sends David back to Ziklag. 1 Samuel 29 The Philistines gathered all their forces at Apak, and Israel camped by the spring of Jezreel. As the Philistines' rule march, rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were marching at the rear with Ashkish. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about the, these Hebrews? Ashkish replied, Is this not David, who was an officer of Saul's king of, of Israel? He has already been with me for one over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry at, with Ashish, and said, Send the men back. They may return they, that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle, or he will turn against us during the fight. And how better could he reign his master's favor by taking the heads of our own men? Isn't this the David they sang about in their dances? Saul has slain his Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. So, Achish called David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable, and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in the army. From the day you came to me until today, I have found no fault in you. But the rulers don't approve of you. Now turn back and go to the place. Do not do nothing to disturb the Philistine rulers. But what have I done? asked David. What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Ashes answered, I know that you have been as pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistine commanders have said, He must not go up with us into battle. Now get up early along with your master's servants who have come with you and leave in the morning as soon as it is light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Okay, that was First Samuel 27 through 29. Now we will be turning to Luke 13. Luke 13. Luke 13. Luke thirteen teen teen Luke thirteen one Repent or perish Luke thirteen Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galatians whose blood palate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered, Do not think that the Gal Galatians were worse sinners than all the other Galatians because they suffered this way. 
I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Stilium fell on them and do not think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. For it bears fruit next year and fine. If not, then cut it down. Jesus heals a crippled woman on the Sabbath. So on the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leaders said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. And the Lord answered him, you hypocrite, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath, Sabbath day for what bound her? When he said all this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things that he was doing. The parables of the mustard seed and the yeast. Then Jesus asked, What is, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about sixty pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. The Narrow Door then Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching, and as he made his way to Jerusalem. Oh, well, that's it. That was the end of Luke 13 through uh, 13, 1 through 22. And so we'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out what 23 through... Um, 35 will bring. That's it for the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow we will be covering 1 Samuel 30 through 31 and Luke 13, 23 through 35. Father, I just thank you for your word. For without your word, I, Shenandoah Briscoe, would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So in Jesus' mighty name, I praise you. I give you all the glory. Amen. And they all said, Amen.
Okay, friends, that's it. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, I'll be here, and I hope that you are.